Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to record really crisp, really clear, close up nail art videos. If that's what you clicked on this video for, keep on watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Lakishi here and it is Thursday, so it's a nail art video, but it's a little bit different. I'm not going to actually be doing a set today, but I, I'm going to be showing you guys how I record my nail art videos. To everyone new to my channel, my name is Lakeisha, and I do post nail art videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and lifestyle videos every other Sunday, so if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. I'm on the road to 5k subscribers, and if you could help me get there, I'd really appreciate it. I'd really appreciate it. Oh my god. There's red lipstick on my fingers. But anyway, I want to cover five main topics in this video, so I'm just going to list them out so you guys know. Recording, what you record your nail art videos with, we're going to be covering that. Two, we're going to be covering the angle that you record at. So a lot of people like to get overhead views, so we're going to be covering how to do that and, you know, pros and cons to different methods. The third thing we're going to be talking about is the source of light. Very important. Number four is the background and number five is the audio. I'm just gonna get a little bit closer just to talk to you guys about recording. So recording, recording, what do you wanna record with? I personally record my nail art videos with my Canon M100 and it's a mirrorless camera. It's what I'm using to record right now. It is a 15 to 45 millimeter zoom lens. I really like recording with my camera because I feel like the color comes up really true and really clear. The only thing I really have to worry about is the lighting. Um, I like to control the lighting with my ISO. And I change the ISO depending on what my environment is looking like. Now, a lot of big nail art YouTubers also record with their phones, and a lot of smartphones have really, really good cameras in them. Like this one here that I'm recording my audio with has three cameras, and you can get really, really close in terms of zooming, so that's good. But sometimes when you zoom in all the way, you run into the area you run into the issue of having a bunch of like digital noise. Let's say if I zoom in really, really close on my phone, I might run into the issue of it getting very grainy. Let's say I zoom in really, really close with my Canon M100, I might run into the issue of it being out of focus. So what you wanna do is zoom in to where you can get as close as possible but the video still as clear as possible. And if you wanna get any closer, go in post, so that's your video editing software, and you can crop. And it's the same thing on there. You can crop to a certain degree, but if you crop too much, you can run into the issue of it being grainy. You know what I'm saying? So find the perfect balance. It's important when you're recording now our videos. Getting nice, close, clear shots of what you're doing is the best. Regardless of which recording device you like to use, um, I recommend the ca an actual camera. It's just way better quality. It looks so much better, but if you have good lighting, you can definitely get away with the phone. It, it works. It works. I'm not going to say it doesn't work. It works. Yeah, just find a good balance and you will be on your way in terms of zoom, cropping, and post, and what you choose to record your uh, nail videos with. To my next topic, it's going to be the angle that you record at. So the angle that you record at a lot of people like to get overhead shots and that is what we're going to be talking about today so this is my boom arm it's essentially something that you attach to a tripod and then you put your camera here to then record facing downward right because this this is where the bottom of the camera goes and the lens is going to be facing this way i really like this as opposed to there's a lot of other ways to get overheads like a lot of people use those um angled arms that you attach to your desk and then you drag it over to get your overhead now the reason why i don't like stuff like that is because if you shake your table then whatever's attached to your table like the extension arm that'll also shake and then it'll shake your video if you have you know whatever you're using to record whether your phone or your camera attached to that arm if you shake your desk or if you shake the arm or if you shake the phone it's gonna be shaking so i really don't like that type of method i prefer to have something that is more on its own separated from the desk i use it with this little mini tripod and that helps me get as close as i want and i put my camera here and that's essentially my setup for overhead shots i'm gonna be showing you guys both uh, like a side-by-side -side comparison so don't even worry there were three different ways I was recording my nail art videos. When I first started out, I slowly have been transitioning to what I record with now, which is the boom arm and the mini tripod. I only had one regular tripod. I mean, yeah, one regular tripod. And what I did, my tripod comes with like a, a head that tilts downward. So essentially I would just have my camera on top and I would tilt it 
downward. I have to bring my, my tripod really close to the edge of my desk so that I can work on the nails. And then also, since that tripod is regular size, a lot of the times, the, the kids, so the camera is kind of like above my head. So a lot of times when I'm working on nails, my head would get in frame. Right now, I am recording my subject with my Canon M100 and my large tripod. Now, right now my camera is zoomed in to about, it's in between 28 and 35. So I'm gonna zoom all the way into 45 millimeters. And this is the closest I can get. I can also crop and post. This is with my large tripod, right? So this is a little bit farther away. So let's say I'm working on these nails, right? And I wanna get in close to see, it, see and get, you know what I'm saying? Do you see how my head just blocked the frame? And it would block everything I'm doing and ruin a video. So that was one way. After I was done being irritated doing that, I decided to buy a boom arm from Amazon and I attached that and I noticed that that was good, but it was a little bit too far away. And I still had the issue of my head getting in frame. So this right here is my boom arm attached to my large tripod and my camera is at 15 millimeters right now. This is 24 millimeters, this is 35 millimeters, and this is 45 millimeters. So this is the closest I can get, and if I wanna get any closer, I can go and post on my um, video editing software and zoom in. But this is what another thing I used to use before I got my small tripod. Now, um, sometimes when I'm working on nail art, let's say if I wanna get in close and do a really fine detail, my head will get in the way of the shot, and that messed up a lot of my video. So I do like that the boom arm let let the camera come out farther enough so that I can push the tripod back, have the camera forward, but still completely overhead. Like I said, the only issue was the fact that, you know, my head kept getting in frame. So I needed a lower tripod, and that's when I got that little mini one. I actually didn't buy this with the intention to just buy this. This came with um, a ring light, and it's a ring light that I don't recommend you buying. So it's kind of like... How do you get this? You're not, get, listen, when I link, I'm gonna link everything that I'm talking about in the description below, but when I link certain things, I'm going to link like a similar version or a better version or, you know, something like that because I got this with a 10 inch ring light and that Reddit that I have right there is a 16 inch ring light. The 10 inch ring light didn't really work that well. It kind of ended up like glitching. Like sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. So I just got rid of it. I was like, I can't deal with this. But I did keep this that came with it. And this is what I use um, along with the boom arm to record my nail videos. So this is how I record my nail art videos now. This is with my small tripod, my boom arm, and um, it, my camera is at 15 millimeters and I can do, you know, I can get really close with the nails. This is very, very close. And this is 15 millimeters, remember. So I can zoom in more, 18, this is 24. If I get too close, it's gonna get out of focus. So this is the closest, like, this is 28. You know what I'm saying? 35. And it's at this point, it's like very out of focus. 40. So uh, once I got this and I had my boom arm, it was like game changer because now my head isn't in frame. I have a perfect overhead shot. And yeah, another thing that's really makeshift that I want to talk about is this counterweight. So this counterweight is literally just a bag with a weight in it. I don't want to take it out now because then I have to retie the knot, but it's literally just like a sand weight. It's actually from my mom's ankle weights. I just took one of them and popped them in this little bag. I bought like a laser pointer for the wall. It came in this black bag. So my counterweight is very makeshift. I'm pretty sure you can buy counterweights. So I will link some counterweights in the description box. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about today is your source of light, lighting. Now, um, there are a lot of different sources of lighting you can get. There's soft boxes, there's ring lights, you can use natural light. When I first started out on YouTube, I was relying heavily on natural light. However, I cannot control mother nature. So, you know, you might wanna put that into consideration if you wanna start making nail art videos. You're limited to only recording in the daytime and um, you also have to like stop and start, let's say if the clouds go in front of the sun and the lighting doesn't look the same in your video. The lighting will be so perfect at the beginning of your video, you optimize it, you, you, you know, you made sure that the, the color was graded perfectly, that there was nice white balance 
and then by the end of your video in the middle of your video the lighting keeps on changing and that's because you're relying on the window really good source of light but it, you can't control it right so what i like to use now is my ring light here and the reason why I, listen i personally feel like the best possible lighting that is that you can control and that looks the closest to window light is a soft box but see i do a lot of my videos in my room so and i know a lot of you guys are going to be doing your videos in like a smaller space like a little room or whatever and you might be using the room for multiple purposes so you don't want to have like huge giant soft box lights you know what i'm saying if you are fortunate enough to have an entire room just for recording then you may want to go the soft box route but for me personally i do a lot of my youtube videos in my room and i don't want big clunky things so what i use in my videos is this boom arm attached light See, I will use the extension arm, but not for video. I will use it for to, to attach my ring light, and it's perfect. I can move it around. Um, the brand is from Neewer, Neewer, Neewer. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's N-E-E-W-E-R, but I got it from Amazon, and I really like it. I can't complain. I can change the settings. I can make it go high. I can make it go low. I can change the modes. I think there's three modes. There's warm, neutral, and cool. Right now, I have it on cool on me but yeah it definitely makes a difference the better lighting you have in your videos the more clear it is the less digital noise you have and the more accurate your color is so definitely make sure you have good lighting good lighting is so important that's the right energy so topic number four is the background and what i mean by the background is essentially what you're recording your nail art videos on I have this white dust you guys saw in my vlog. I went to Ikea and I recently bought a fresh new white dust, thank God, because I'm so over that picnic table. And um, yeah, so I personally feel like the best type of backgrounds for your nail art videos is a white background because for multiple reasons. One, it bounces light really good and you'll get a nice clear crisper video that way one and two i feel like it's just easier for the viewer to see exactly what's going on when you have a clean clear white background it's just it's a no-brainer but i'm not gonna say that you have to go out and buy a whole white desk let's say if you have a black desk this is a pro tip what you can do is you can go on Amazon and get a silicone mat in white or whatever color you feel like recording your nail art videos with. But um, silicone mats and nail art go hand in hand. Like it's peanut butter and jelly, sis. Like honestly, I'm no word of a lie. Silicone mat gets you a silicone mat. Number one, it protects your desk. Number two, you can mix colors on there if you need to do a color match or if you need to make a custom color, or whatever. You can mix colors on there and number three you can cure let's say if you um, are working on your own hands right and you need to do something that's very like hand-drawn delicate line work stuff like that you can do it on, with your let's say you're right-handed you can do it with your right hand but you can't do it with your left hand right what you can do is you can draw the design on the silicone mat you can draw it on the silicone mat and you can cure it peel it off because it peels right off of silicone and then tack it onto your nail and continue on so i love i love a silicone mat sis i love a silicone mat i love it get you one it's an i'm telling you i'm telling you don't sleep on the silicone mats i have one um it's specifically made for nail art it's actually specifically made for nail stamping but i want to get another one i want to get another one that's just white and i also want another one that's just pink i want pink and white yeah, so that's the background of your videos. And the last topic that we're going to be covering today is, I forgot, oh yeah, audio. <laughs> the fifth and final topic I want to talk about in terms of how to record really good nail art videos is the audio. So I record my audio with my phone. A lot of phones have really good microphones in them. That makes sense because phones are originally designed to, you know, talk on the phone. So they have to have a good microphone. So I use my iPhone, my iPhone's audio, and that is sufficient. Um, it's definitely good for when I do videos like this and I don't want to have, you know, earphones in my ears because it doesn't look, it doesn't look right. Um, there are a lot of microphones out there. You can get the little clip-on microphones. You can get like a whole stationary microphone that's about like this big. A good quality one would probably be close to $200. So if you have the budget for that, go ahead and do that. But I know that the little clip-on ones can maybe run you like $7 to $12 if I'm not mistaken on Amazon and 
a phone if you already have a phone you already have a phone okay so there's two ways that you can record audio you can record your audio while you're recording your videos and then another another way you can record audio is to record um, just the footage of your nail art design and then um, after you finish editing the video you then record a voiceover of the video that's what I tend to do a lot with man with my nail art videos and what I'd like to do what I found out recently is that the best thing to do is to plug my earphones into my phone and hold the microphone piece up to my mouth so that you guys can hear me as closely and as crispy crispy crisply uh, <laughs> as close and as crisp as possible um, without too much white noise so white noise is that shh, like that staticky kind of noise and to minimize that I use my earphones I used to just use my phone just like this for all of my voiceovers but now I transitioned um, into just using my earphones but like I said I can't have an earphone in this type of video so I'm just using my phone I probably sounded closer when I held it up yeah those are basically the five topics I wanted to cover in terms of how to record nail art videos and how I record my nail art videos how to record really good quality nail art videos thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the end I hope you found a lot of value in this video and if you did please share this video with someone else who you think would love my content I'm really trying to grow and my next goal is to 5,000 subscribers so if you could help me get to 5,000 that would be that would mean the world to me that'd be freaking bomb Oh, that'd be bomb. But anyway, that's all for this video and bye for now.